Hello and welcome to Money Life. This is Sucheta Dilal. Today we are going to talk about the launch of Ola's e-scooters. There was a huge splashy launch on Independence Day two days ago at Bangalore, and it was really something. This is a new scooter from a state-of-the-art facility, built to global scale, and people just loved it. The question that everyone is asking is. Is this going to be the iPhone of the two-wheeler industry or is it going to be Nano which was launched 12 years ago? Similarly splashy launch, huge expectation. As an aside, Ratan Tata is an investor in Ola. So let's look at this product. Now, Bhavi Shagarwal, CEO and founder, certainly was doing the Steve Jobs of Apple. He led from the front, introduced the scooter, told us about how it is the best design, best performance, best technology and it was a revolutionary pro product that several generations ahead of anything in the marketplace. Certainly the video is exciting and compelling and it's a scooter like one has never seen before. In fact, one shouldn't even call it a scooter, the kind of technology that's built into it. Bhavi Shagarwal also hopes that by 2025, all two-wheelers made in India will be e-scooters. Let's hope that happens. He certainly has built the scale to achieve this kind of a dream. But he's not alone. There are several players in the market already, many of them. In terms of size, Ola dwarfs all of them. But you have Ita Energy, Okinawa, Hero Electric India, Simple Energy. A couple of them just launched, some about to launch. And some are pretty good products is the feedback on social media. I try to get a response on the Ola launch from a variety of sources, competitors, the company itself, as well as social media, where everyone's obviously seen this video. Before going into a discussion, let's look at basics. Ola has already started bookings at a low 499. It's got 100,000 bookings already and it expects to roll out the scooters in October. They're going to be manufactured at an absolutely state-of-the-art facility on 500 acres of land at Krishna Nagari in Tamil Nadu. Economies of scale up there. It's global. It's got going to have an ancillary hub at the same spot. And according to Entrac, a web magazine, Ola Electric Technologies Private Limited, which was incorporated in Jan 2020 under Ola Electric Mobility as a holding company, is going to construct, implement, develop, operate and maintain a greenfield project, not just for two-wheelers, but three and four as well at this hub. So economies of scale as well as huge export potential for a global launch is on the ground. It's going to start low, but it can build up. It can make the number of scooters that it can make over there is also huge. Now, in terms of price, Launch two variants, the S1 and the S1 Pro. The S1 is just one rupee under a lakh. The S1 Pro is 129.999 or 1 lakh 30. This price includes Fame 2 subsidies but doesn't include subsidies further offered by various states. So here's a table which shows that prices will be different in different states. For instance, Delhi would be about 85,000, Gujarat would be about 80,000. Now let's look at the best tech claim. This has several unique features such as super accelerating power or fast it moves to stop speed, reverse mode, hill hold feature which means that if it's on a slope it detects that you don't have to put your legs on the ground and hammer the brakes. It's got a flame retardant battery, anti-theft feature, fabulous touch screen display which can be customized to give you your moods, your music different sounds for the scooter. The scooter recognizes you, so there's no key. There's a smartphone-based app which will greet you with a hello, whatever. When you come close to it, you can build it for guests, valets, whatever. It's wonderful. It's got a navigation tool, so you don't need to keep your smartphone in front of you to have your Google Maps on. All very wonderful. Prices, like we said, are competitive because that's the competition is priced reasonably around the same level. I mean, let's look at it. Bike Deco magazine says there are 178, not one or two, 178 electric bikes already in the market. 
pricing starting from 25,000 at the lower end to as much as a lakh and more. So something like Revolt would cost 90,000, something like TVS IQ is about a lakh, Aether is over a lakh, Hero Electric India, like I said earlier, has a 40% market share, seven different vehicles in the market, price between 47 and 80,000. So given the kind of tech that Ola is offering, the pricing seems fair enough. And as Professor Sanjay Bakshi, who has just bought an Aether e-scooter says, history tells us that over a period of time, product as well, product gets better and the price will get cheaper. Let's hope this happens. Here's a price comparison that Mike Dikko is giving you. I'm not going to read it out. It's on your screen. The real test, according to me, is around the battery, the charging and issues related to that. So will Ola get them right? These issues are complex depending on where you stay. Are you in a city where you stay in a multi-story department? Parking is scarce and how to charge will be an issue. So while every a scooter will come with a charger, you can't really carry it up to your flat. The battery itself is again 30% better than others is what Ola says, state of the art. According to Ola, the S1 Pro has got a 3.97 kWh battery which can power 181 kilometers on a single charge which reaches a top speed of 115 kilometers per hour. The S1 battery is smaller 2.9 kWh can do 121 kilometers in a single charge with a top speed of 90 kilometers. This, as Ola says, is 30% higher. But remember, Ola is not making the batteries right now. It's going to import them from Korea. Going to make them later. It's got a proprietary battery management system, which is going to monitor usage of the batteries. And it's also going to tell you about the nearest charging. It's going to take care of that. But while it's so transparent about these things, some other issues are not mentioned. Now, question is about batteries. If the battery is removable, there are lots of advantages. You can carry it home and just charge the battery. There are people talking about battery swaps. For instance, you go and give a battery and get another one which you just insert into your scooter, making it easy. Ola has not gone in for that. Ola's is a fixed battery, which means that you have to charge it where it is. This leads to a lot of issues. I reached out to Ola's uh, PR agency add factors for some answers. I must say I haven't got all of them. So the key question that I asked is it was going to take four hours to charge your battery at home and not everybody's charge your scooter at home and not everyone's going to carry their scooters to their flat or have a convenient compound in which it's parked with a charger outside. Then what happens? How many charging points does Ola have or will it have in October when it launches? First go, I got the PR release, which talks about 100,000 chargers across 400 cities. This is what is there on its website, Hypercharger Network. Here's a link to it, olaelectric.com slash hypercharger network. Not good enough, so I prod it further. Then I get another answer. It says, Ola plans to have 5,000 charging points across 100 cities, more than double the charging infrastructure in the country as of date, and Ola will roll this out as per their sales rollout, which means in October, it may not even have these 5,000 charging points. This raises several questions. First, let me say that social media talks about 8,000 charging points, HPCL and the Tata company having them. Ola says there aren't that many and Ola should know because it's launching a product and it would probably have tied up with them. Now, 100 cities is really low because its press statements also talk about a thousand city launch simultaneously rather than a phased launch. So is it going to launch in 100 cities because it's accepted booking span India? So which are the 100 cities? We don't know. If it's 100,000 charges are also going to be in 400 cities, that means the scooters can at best be in 400 cities or it has to have tie-ups elsewhere. We have no answers about how this is going to work, not for want of trying. I did try to ask the PR agency multiple times and we don't have it. So lots of confusion and unanswered questions around how and where it's going to launch, which cities is it going to be as big as it claims, why is it accepting pan-India bookings, if the rollout is going to be smaller, when will it be delivered, we don't know. Now let's come to the charging itself. 
Its website says that in 18 minutes, the hypercharger network can do a 50% charge. Of course, if it much longer on a 5 amp ampere charger at home, 4 or 5 hours. 36 minutes, that means for a full charge, even on this fast hypercharger network. Question is how many hypercharger facilities are going to be there? I already told you, not enough answers. 36 minutes adds serious commute time to people in cities every two or three days when you need to charge it. It's not like just filling your tank and sipping off. So fossil fuels are polluting but they're, and they're expensive, but there is a disadvantage to this long charging time with no answers, which is going to be key to e-scooters taking off because it is tedious. Remember in a place like Bombay, whether you take an 858 local or a 902 makes all the difference to most people. And while many people have switched to two wheelers during the pandemic, commuting time or rather battery charging time is going to be important. Some people say you will have chargers at cafes and petrol pumps. Well, you're not going to spend 40 minutes sitting there. That's not what you want to do as a routine. You don't want to add the additional cost of a coffee in a swank coffee house or a Starbucks or a cafe coffee day because that adds to your lifetime cost, right? How long the battery lasts is another important issue. Most bat battery is an important and expensive component of any two-wheeler or three-wheeler or four-wheeler. Normal batteries last three to four years. How long will Ola's battery last? What is the wa warranty? There's absolutely no information. Now, Money Control article during the launch quoted Bhavi Chagarwal saying Ola's batteries would launch would, would last seven to eight years. This is not a claim that the company has made. When I specifically asked the PR agency, they did not, they just ignored this. They did not repeat the claim. So we don't know if that is true or not. What it says is that what the answer that I got is that it will share details of warranties when the purchase opens. Why not now? We don't know. The obfuscation, if you ask me, is disappointing because three to four years or seven to eight years makes all the difference in lifetime costs and warranties also make a difference. First of all, battery life reduces with usage. Okay, And as somebody says on Twitter, all these, all responsible companies would announce it up front. Ola hasn't done that as yet. Dr. A. Velumani, founder of Thyrocare, has an important point that he's posted on in a tweet he says, not only the cost of the battery, but ease of disposing is going to be a serious issue as more and more people use uh, electric vehicles. There's no information on that either. What Ola has going for it is that there is a favorable environment. Apart from subsidies that are there, governments seem to be willing to go the extra mile to make e-vehicles work. For instance, in Mumbai, the Metro Mumbai Metropolitan Regional Development Authority, MMRD, allowed space for Yulu, which is a app-based e-bike, which is on can be hired on a pay-per-use basis and had a good response during the pandemic. It was launched last August. It's supposed to be doing well, which means that governments are receptive to providing and building the infrastructure for e-vehicles. That is a plus, not just for Ola, but for everybody who is launching e-vehicles. And as we said, there's a lot of competition out there. The plus side also, it looks like a world-class product if it can resolve the charging and the battery issue. Charging be key, but it could be a deal breaker. How do Ola's competitors look at it? I reached out to one who I think is savvy and has done some out-of-the-box work. He was less than impressed. He said, specs claim can be misleading, subsidies can evaporate overnight and technology is not remarkable, only incremental. The keyless start and reverse gear have been around for two years. We will know better when we have tested it after October. Paraphrase this a little. Question is, is he being perceptive or wrongly dismissive? Well, we ourselves, even as lay people, have found some issues which need to be answered before you make a buying decision. So has he got it right? Whether Ola's e-scooters turn out to be the iPhone of the two-wheeler industry will depend on whether it's able to manage the charging and the battery issue. Like I said, so far, no answers. If you like what I said, please share this video and subscribe to Bunny Life News Bites.
Thank you. 